I understand the deep importance that you place on feeling empowered and in control of your life. The personal pursuit of growth and success is a value I share as well. That's why I'm thrilled to offer you a more detailed guide on establishing a healthier relationship with alcohol, equipping you with the tools to reclaim control of your life. If you would just give me a few moments of your time, I can delve further into three super important tips that will undoubtedly transform your perspective on alcohol consumption and help you achieve your desired level of self-mastery. Let me first start with introducing myself. I'm Jeff a licensed therapist specializing in both mental health and addiction. These are the tips that I've gleaned over years of working and getting experience in the field of addiction. So let's start with tip number one, building a strong support system. I cannot overvalue this one enough. Recovery support systems are the bedrock of your emotional well-being, acting as a safety net during challenging times. These systems encompass the people in your inner circle that you trust and feel comfortable turning to for solace, advice, and encouragement. Not only do they provide a listening ear and a caring heart, but they also offer a helping hand, be it through physical presence, engaging in shared activities, or simply being there for you when you need it the most. Emotional support is the cornerstone for any reliable support system. It plays a pivotal role in establishing a strong foundation of trust and understanding. Now to take a support system to the next level of a strong support system and make this support system truly formidable, various key elements come into play. One crucial factor is understanding attachments styles and recognizing how you connect and form relationships with others. Attachment styles influence how you perceive support and how you respond to it. By comprehending your attachment style and the attachment styles of others in your life, you can build more empathetic and nurturing connections, fostering a deeper sense of support within your support system. Another essential aspect is grasping the concept of love languages. We all have a unique love language in the way that we express and perceive love and expressing and comprehending these love languages within our support system enables us to cater to others' emotional needs effectively. Some may feel love through words of affirmation, while others may feel cherished with acts of servitude or quality time. By understanding and incorporating love languages, you can fortify the bonds within your support system, and this ensures that everybody feels valued and cherished. Maintaining a strong support system also entails understanding and respecting boundaries. Each individual has their limits, and it is vital to communicate these boundaries openly and honestly. Respect Respecting personal boundaries fosters an environment of trust and mutual respect, ensuring that support is given and received in consideration and sensitivity. Moreover, communication plays a pivotal role in the growth of a support system. Effective and compassionate communication is vital for expressing needs, sharing emotions, and resolving conflict. By cultivating open lines of communication, we can nurture a supportive environment where everyone feels heard and understood. Furthermore, a support system must be cognizant of the differences between healthy and unhealthy relationships. Recognizing red flags and toxic patterns is critical for maintaining a positive and nurturing network. This awareness enables us to surround ourselves with people who uplift us and contribute positive to our growth and well-being. These interconnected elements are instrumental in forging a robust support system, one that empowers you to pursue long-term recovery. By understanding and appreciating the nuances of the company that you keep, you can identify patterns that either elevate or hinder your growth. Armed with this knowledge, you can intentionally elevate your support network, making sure that it aligns with your needs during your moments of vulnerability. Sadly, addiction can often strain relationships and cause pain to our loved ones. However, the power of a strong support system lies not only in its ability to bolster your recovery, but also in its potential to mend, burn bridges, and restore these precious connections. By working towards enhancing your support system, you can heal wounds, rebuild trust, and reconnect to those that you hold dear. During challenging times, remember to never isolate yourself. Reaching out to your support system is a source of strength, and their collective encouragement will fortify you as you overcome obstacles and work to maintain your commitment to recovery. So tip number two, understanding the root causes of overdrinking. A holistic approach to alcohol recovery is an integrated method that addresses all aspects of a person's well-being. This includes physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual spiritual. This approach recognizes that alcohol addiction is a complex issue that requires more than just treating physical symptoms. Instead, it seeks to heal the whole person and support the overall health and life balance. So when I say health and life balance, I'm talking about all areas of your life. As I mentioned, we're not just looking at physical symptoms. We're looking at stress levels. We're looking at the relationships that I mentioned in your support system. We're looking at work. We're looking at your home life. We're looking at inside. So the approach at looking at all the areas 
areas of your life helps you have the long-term recovery. Because we're not just trying to put a band-aid on the symptoms. One of the analogies that we use a lot in my field is cleaning the wound. We may put a bandage on the wound, we may wrap the wound, but until we get in there and clean that wound out, it's never gonna properly heal. And that's what we're doing with recovery. That's why the holistic approach just works. Drinking rules are also a really important part of recovery. A drinking rule aimed at limiting alcohol use is a guideline designed to promote responsible drinking and prevent excessive consumption. Such rules are especially important in social settings where alcohol may be present, as they can help ensure everybody's safety and well-being. Drinking rules work really well for holding yourself accountable, especially when you know that you overdrink. Here are some examples of some drinking rules to help limit alcohol use. One drink per hour. A standard drink size here in the U.S is five ounces for wine, 12 ounces for beer, or 1.5 ounces for a shot of alcohol. For example, if you buy a bottle of alcohol that's 80 proof, that's 40% alcohol by volume. That's why it's important to go by the standard drink, at least here in the US. Also something to remember is that some drinks, especially those mixed drinks that you can get in the can, sometimes their percentage of alcohol can be all over the place, and you may not actually be drinking a standard drink. This is important if you plan to track your drinking while you're going through recovery. It's something that I recommend. Tracking your drinks is a really important part of alcohol recovery because it helps you understand how much you're consuming and helps you set goals for where you'd like to be in your alcohol consumption. Sobriety is not for everybody, and I also come from a perspective of moderation, so you do what's best for you. Now, another benefit for the drinking rule of one drink per hour is this rule helps pace drinking, and it prevents rapid and excessive consumption. Another rule can be alternate between alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks. For example, for every alcoholic beverage consumed, you would hold yourself accountable and then consume a non-alcoholic beverage rotating that. This also helps keep you hydrated because alcohol is known to dehydrate the body and slows down your alcohol intake. And one rule that I enforce everybody to have when they're creating drinking rules is to never drink and drive. Here in the U.S., if you have a blood alcohol content or back over a 0.08, that is over the legal limits and you can go to jail or you can get a DWI or a DUI. And alcohol is known to slow down response time. You're never going to be able to respond to something quick enough to prevent a car accident. So just err on the side of caution be responsible with your drinking and don't drink and drive. And a final drinking rule that I'll mention is a time limit on your drinking. You would agree to stop drinking alcohol after a certain time, such as midnight or a predetermined hour. This prevents late night excessive drinking or making sure you're not drinking before work. Excessive alcohol use can also be influenced by various factors. And it's important to recognize that it is often a complex interplay of multiple causes. Some of the root causes of excessive alcohol can include social and cultural factors. Social norms and cultural practices related to alcohol consumption can play a significant role in excessive alcohol use. In societies where heavy drinking is accepted and encouraged, people may feel prone to more excessive alcohol consumption. Genetic predisposition can increase the risk of developing alcohol use disorders. Some people have a higher sensitivity to alcohol's effects or a family history of alcoholism, making them more susceptible to developing a problematic relationship with alcohol. Underlining psychological issues such as stress, anxiety, depression, or or other mental health disorders can lead people to use alcohol as a coping mechanism. I see a lot of clients that do this. It might provide temporary release from emotional distress, which eventually leads to a pattern of excessive use. A person's environment, including their home, work, and social circles, can influence their alcohol consumption. Peer pressure, exposure to heavy drinking in social settings, or having ease of access to alcohol can contribute to excessive use. Past traumas or adverse life events, such as abuse, neglect, or significant losses can lead some to use alcohol as a means to numb the emotional pain or escape the distressing memories. Those with low self-esteem or those seeking acceptance from certain peer groups may engage in excessive alcohol use to fit in or gain social approval. A lack of awareness about potential risks and consequences of excessive alcohol consumption can contribute to its prevalence. Education about responsible drinking and the dangers of excessive use is essential to promote health your behaviors. The widespread availability of alcohol and targeted advertising can influence people to consume more alcohol than they otherwise normally would. Some people may have a genetic or neurological factor that makes them more prone to developing addictive behaviors. Alcohol can temporarily alleviate physical and emotional discomfort, leading to some people to rely on it as a coping mechanism for various life challenges. I know what I just shared was a lot to take in, and these tips are really important to implement for your long-term recovery. I've developed a program that can help you with 
aspire towards the recovery goals that you set for yourself, whether that's moderation or abstinence. I believe in both. Each person has their own unique circumstances and needs that they need support in to help them get to their recovery goals. Some people may need abstinence. Some people will do better with moderation. It's for you to decide what's best for you. The program I have designed can help you achieve either or. You can try with moderation first if you want to, and if it doesn't work, you can then go for sobriety. However, sobriety doesn't have to be forever. You may just need a period of sobriety so you can help get a handle on what the root causes may be to your over drinking. And once you feel comfortable enough in your sobriety and that you've got that understanding of your root causes and feel very comfortable in managing your root causes and your triggers, then you can move on to moderation. If you're wanting to go to moderation would be something you would gradually introduce back into your life. My program can help with all of that. And I'm really excited to share it with you. The Active Recovery is an online program that I meticulously crafted to help people go through their recovery. I saw a need for people that needed recovery delivered to them from the comfort of their own home. A lot of people don't have time to go to rehab or some don't even qualify to go to rehab. But if you do end up going to rehab, how are you gonna work? How are you gonna support your family? You don't have 30 days that you can take off work. Or as I had mentioned, some people don't qualify for those services. So they're just kind of right in that gray area of I need help, but I don't really know how to get that help or I'm not getting diagnosed to get that help because I'm not meeting criteria. This program is meant to solve those problems. This comprehensive program is an accumulation of my experience and expertise of my years of working in the field, especially working at addiction rehabilitation. So I have firsthand experience of working with people from the ground up through their recovery. Within the program, which is called the Active Recovery, you will find over 60 video lessons that provide valuable insights, guidance, and practical tips to help you navigate your path towards a healthier relationship with alcohol. These tips and tricks have been honed to perfection, making sure you have all the tools that you need to achieve your recovery goals, whatever that may look like for you. Now, in addition to the wealth of video content offered in this online program, it also includes a thoughtfully designed workbook that I put a lot of hard work and energy into designing for you. I handcrafted this, no one else helped me with it, and you get a drink tracker and a mood tracker. The workbook will guide you through reflective exercises, promoting you to explore your motivations, triggers, and emotions surrounding alcohol. This self-exploration is integral to part of understanding your relationship with alcohol and will pave the way for meaningful change. The drink tracker, on the other hand, serves as an invaluable companion during your recovery. By keeping track of your alcohol consumption and progress, you can gain a clear picture of your achievements in areas that may require further attention. The drink tracker can serve as a source of motivation, reminding you how far you've come and inspiring you to keep moving forward. The active recovery is not a one-size-fits-all solution. It is carefully crafted to cater to those individuals like yourself who acknowledge that their drinking habits may be hindering their full potential in life. The program takes into account the complexities of busy modern lives. Understanding that quitting your job or undergoing drastic changes may not be the best approach for you. That's why this program considers both abstinence and moderation as viable options, placing the decision-making power firmly in your hands, where it should be. With the right guidance and support, you can confidently choose the path that aligns best with your goals, ensuring a sustainable and fulfilling recovery journey. As you progress through the act of recovery, you will gain in-depth understanding of yourself and your relationship with alcohol. Armed with this newfound knowledge, you will be better equipped to confront challenges, manage triggers, and celebrate your victories, no matter how small. The journey towards recovery is one of self-discovery and personal growth. You will unlock hidden potential, embracing a life where you are in full control and free from the hold of excessive alcohol consumption. Imagine waking up one day, feeling empowered and ready to embrace life to its fullest. The impact of this transformation will ripple throughout every aspect of your life. Your relationships will deepen and flourish. Your productivity and focus will soar and you will savor every moment with newfound clarity and appreciation. Now, as I promised, I have tip number three that I'm gonna give you, but I was just so excited to share my program with you. The last step that I wanted to share with you is creating a relapse prevention plan. I want you to look beyond a preventional plan to a holistic preventative approach. For example, a traditional relapse prevention plan may just have you write down your triggers, but a holistic relapse prevention plan, which is one that I offer in my program, is going to not only have you write down your triggers, but events that could cause these triggers. For example, if you have a social function with your mother and you don't get along very well with your mother, how are you going to handle that? Because being in that situation with your mother, 
weather you recognize as a triggering event for you that makes you want to go home and drink, or it makes you not want to go participate in that social situation and stay home and drink. So how do we combat that? How do we deal with that? Which in that situation, the mother could be part of the root cause of over drinking. But in a holistic approach, we're looking at the mental side. We're looking at the physical side. We're looking at the spiritual side. And when I say spiritual, I don't mean religion per se. You'll do what you align with. If that's God, if that's Buddha, if that's nothing at all, the spiritual is just connecting with something beyond yourself. Well, it could be nature. I personally love nature and going and connecting with nature. The spiritual side is just stepping outside of yourself. Now imagine your relapse prevention plan as a meticulously crafted blueprint designed to ensure your triumph journey away from addictive behaviors. Delving into this approach will empower you to recognize and navigate the triggers that lead to cravings and temptations, whether they are certain situations, emotions, or particular people or places. As we say in my field, people, places, or things. Pinpointing these factors is essential to building resilience. However, having a support network forms the backbone of your relapse prevention plan. Surround yourself with friends, family, or like-minded individuals by joining a support group, such as Alcoholics Anonymous, or known as AA. The power of shared experiences and mutual encouragements cannot be overstated. These are people who genuinely understand your struggles and will uplift you when the going gets tough. It's worth mentioning that 12-step is not for everyone, and that's totally okay. Another program called Moderation Management, or MM, Moderation Management could be a great thing to look into. MM has a jumpstart program that is worth looking into if you are on a budget. I just cannot overstate enough how awesome their resources are, and MM is supported online, meaning you can join support groups right from the comfort of your own home. Mastering the art of coping with stress or difficult emotions is another cornerstone of your relapse prevention plan. Mindfulness, physical activity, creative of outlets, and explore and discover what resonates with you more effectively. These coping strategies will boost your mental and emotional fortitude, providing with alternative avenues to unwind and de-stress. Additionally, it's wise to avoid high-risk situations that could trigger a relapse. Staying away from environments that may tempt you to succumb to old habits can be a game changer. A structured daily routine acts as a compass, directing your focus and providing stability during your recovery. Knowledge is undoubtedly a powerful asset on your recovery journey. Educating yourself about addiction, its effects, and the recovery process enhances your ability to face challenges head on and make informed decisions. Equally important is setting realistic and measurable goals, both short-term and long-term. Short-term goals usually meaning days to weeks, where long-term goals usually mean months to years. Acknowledging and celebrating each small victory is vital for maintaining motivation and building momentum towards long-lasting change. Be prepared for those unexpected moments where you might feel vulnerable to relapse. Having an emergency plan in place will serve as a lifeline during these times. Reach out to a trusted friend, a therapist, or use a helpline for immediate support. Remember that recovery is a journey of growth with its fair share of ups and downs. Embrace this process with kindness and understanding towards yourself. Self-compassion is a big thing that I teach in recovery. Treat yourself the same way that you would treat a friend or family member if they came to you with the same issues. Setbacks are normal and should not be seen as failures, but as stepping stones towards eventual triumph. With this comprehensive guide, I aim to inspire and equip you to lead a life of fulfillment and free from the shackles of excessive alcohol consumption. Whether you choose to embrace moderation or embark on the path of complete abstinence, the journey towards a happier, healthier life and more meaningful relationships begins with understanding and reclaiming your control of your relationship with alcohol. So as you embark on this journey, remember that it's okay to seek help and guidance. And why not seek help from someone that can put all the tools that you need in one place and that has the expertise to help? It takes courage to recognize when change is needed. And by taking this step, you've already demonstrated incredible strength. The act of recovery is your roadmap to a life of fulfillment and self-mastery. Are you ready to take this transformative step towards a better and more fulfilling life? If so, check out the act of recovery and embark on a journey that will forever change the course of your life. A journey that will bring you close to the life you've always envisioned, a life of true contentment and genuine happiness. You have all the power within yourself to make this positive change. With the act of recovery, you will have the guidance, support, and resources to turn your aspirations into reality. If you are ready to take control of your life and have a better relationship with alcohol, check out the description to learn more. I'll see you there.